Good morning, everyone. This is Jeffy Kennedy, author of Fantasy Romance and Romantic Fantasy. I'm here with my first cup of coffee, which Annette has decided to partake of also. No, thank you. Hmm. I was wondering if it could be a little bit bitter. I was scraping the bottom of the stevia bottle. Hmm. Am I going to be unhappy with this? I might. <laughs> uh, let's see. Today is Tuesday, July 6th. Welcome to Tuesday. Uh, so, um, so yeah, it's not so bad. I can live with it. I'll make the next cup sweeter to make up for it beautiful sunny morning here in Santa Fe. We got more rain last night. Um, definitely in that monsoon pattern of getting rain in the afternoon or evening. So that's really um, delightful. It, very happy making really see the desert responding. Woo. <laughs> Clip the edge of my laptop with the cup. It's not a great thing. Yesterday was a good day. Uh, I got 3000 words on dragon's daughter and the winter mage. It took me about three hours and 20 minutes all told, um, a little bit longer with breaks between, but the words came fairly easily and I felt good. The well was refilled. So, um, that week off, it felt like it didn't do much, but it clearly did. So that was smart. Um, we'll see how, how well it um, holds up if I sustain it well, but I think that, uh, I think it's going to be good. I decided not to do the 2,500 words and 500 because one thing I do when I start a new book is I set up my spreadsheet and I look at my calendar and I map out days off days that I know that I'm not going to be able to write for one reason or another, you know, like, um, birthdays or you know like special celebrations something like that so i mapped the whole thing out and i decided that um i would really love to have a draft of dragon's daughter done by august 20th because that's a friday and on the 22nd i am going to um away from my birthday. I'm going to Coronado Island and very excited to do that. So it'd be nice to have the book done. I could even give it to um, beta readers at that point, which would be cool. So, but I, I would really have to keep it at 3000 words a day. So I thought, well, let's just try this. Once I did the 3000 words, I tried to see if I could get 500 on the V project. And I did, I got 527 and it felt fine. Um, of course these things can. So the trick will be to see how, what happens cumulatively. And then if it ends up being too much, it's V project that will get ditched. But if I can get my 2,500 words on it this week, and I already had like 1600 that's putting me in the neighborhood of what I need. Cause I need in the, I need about 4,000 or so it depends. Um, cause it's small chunks. You guys are totally going to figure out what this is for. So we'll see. I'm sticking to small chunks and the smallest, the chunk can be is 600 words. Well. There's, there's a clue and the longest it can be is 5,000. So one, I'm not going to do a 5,000 word chunk when I can do like more like a thousand. And a lot of my chapters are in the neighborhood. It depends on the book, but the neighborhood of a thousand to 2000 words per chapter. Well, the bright, bright familiar and dark wizard, those, those chapters are substantially longer. Those are sometimes four or 5,000 word chapters. Hmm. Coffee's good this morning. Um, 
I might go on a snorkeling tour on Coronado Island. I was looking that up and they actually have some good ones like out to um, Laredo, um, some various excursions. So if you, if you guys know anything, if you have any tips about snorkeling, which is one of my all time favorite things to do um, around Coronado Island area, please let me know because I want to, um, I want to find a really fun thing to do to celebrate my birthday. Uh, milestone birthday. Yeah. So that's my plan. We're going to try to do those two things. That's going to be the focus for the next month or so. And um, of course, Bright Familiar comes out Friday. I'm doing a chat today uh, for world builders at um, 11 mountain time. 11 to 12 mountain time. So um, that'll be fun to do. I, I'm not sure uh, what all they're going to ask me about. This is the one where they, um, I don't know if I told you guys this, it's really kind of funny because this is the one, you know, like a week ago I got that migraine and I couldn't do the online panel that evening and this is my reschedule. So we'll do the reschedule. It might be fun. I might come out here and see unless it's, it might be too bright that time of day. We'll see probably do it in my office truth be told. But um, <laughs> when their their intern for whom they apparently had an, a hashtag I don't think they created it just for me which was damn it Gary um, p- picked out like putting together the ad for it uh, said that I'd be discussing dystopian vampire romance. That's me giving a, a long stare into the camera. So to be fair, to be fair, I have written dystopian vampire romance. I wouldn't have exactly characterized it that way. Although apparently I did because they said that damn it Gary uh, pulled it off of my website, the genres. But I have two stories I wrote for Alora's cave back in the day. I mean, low these many years ago, like 12, 13 years ago. Um, and those are the blood currency books. I did um, feeding the vampire and hunting the siren. They're f- quite short. Did them for Alora's cave, got the rights back when Alora's cave uh, crashed and burned and republished it as blood currency. I'll, I'll put a link in there if you guys want to read them. I mean, it's this post apocalyptic world where the vampires have been sort of flushed out of hiding and there aren't that many people. So they have to uh, kind of work with people in order to get their blood bags. And um, yeah, I mean, feeding the vampire was from a dream that I had. And then I, I more um, consciously made up the story for hunting the siren. So anyway, it was just really funny to me that it was like those books <laughs> got grabbed dystopian vampire romance. It's like, you know, actually, I don't think I'm, I mean, I guess I can talk about it, but uh, certainly not what I'm known for, but that's what happens when people um, who don't know you like, grab things. <laughs> uh, my vines off to the side here are really growing up nicely. They're loving all this rain looking really good. And my Jasmine, did I say that I nearly killed this Jasmine and it's coming back. Uh, I had it in a pot that didn't drain and the Jasmine, it turns out hates that. And so it very nearly died. So and I repotted it. And it, now it's not in a cute pot, but it is in a life giving pot. <laughs> so um, that's nice. I nice said it will recover. It's one of those things where I was like, oh, well, because the jasmine won't overwinter outside anyway. That's why I was keeping it in a pot. So I'm not sure I can keep it alive through the winter. I was thinking about giving it to my mom. Um, I have, I'd have to work out the timing for that, but wouldn't that be great if she could like overwinter it in Tucson for me and then give it back to me in spring. I like this idea. Hi Hummer. (laughs) 
Um, what else was I going to tell you guys? So I'm doing that. Oh, also, um, I am teaching a master class at the end of the month on uh, world building from a character driven perspective. I think it'll be kind of interesting. It's like a six hour class on I think July 25th. I can link to it in the show notes but let's just double check this. Dun 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 dun. Yeah and it's going to start at 11 a.m. mountain time on July 25th. So come and join me for that if you're interested. Um, it, it should be a nice intensive workshop. So there's that. Um, and then also today I am giving a shout out. Well, I have, I'm giving a shout out to, uh, Jennifer Eastep, who's, uh, the first book in her gargoyle, gargoyle queen. That's for some reason hard to say gargoyle queen, uh, trilogy, uh, capture the crown. It's out today. Congratulations, Jennifer. I already pimped her book, so we don't need to pimp it again. Uh, instead we're going to be talking about a book that's been out for a few weeks now. Um, and that is, I will show it to you here. Outrageous. And I will put the cover on stuff so you don't have to fight through the glare, but then, and now I've got, um, finger marks on my phone. Okay. Wait, hang on. This is such a class operation here. You guys, I can't even tell you about the production values. Okay, here we go. <laughs> you can still see fingerprints. Oh, well, <laughs> outrageous by Minerva Spencer, who is a friend of mine. She lives, um, up in Taos, even though I haven't seen her for two years, which I blame her for, but, um, outrageous. Um, I even helped her come up with her pen name of Minerva Spencer. Actually, she took, she picked the Minerva part, uh, but I picked the Spencer part. So, um, this is part of her rebels of the Tawn series. It's funny the press release says rebels of the Tawns, and I don't think that's probably correct. Rebels of the Tawn. Oh, well, Regency women challenge the status quo in Minerva Spencer's rebels of the Tawn. There we go. Series when the heroine kidnaps the hero for a change in a race to Gretna green in a tale perfect for the Bridgerton binge watcher. Boy, everybody's wanting to capitalize on Bridgerton. So, um, so she brings a rebellious spirit to the Regency with rebels of the Tawn, a vibrant new series focused on the youth Raven approves on the youth of the era as they subvert the social expectations of the day in order to carve their own paths in life. In this second installment, historical romance tropes are turned upside down when that's the heroine who kidnaps an Earl and th threatens to have her way with him. Full of wit and humor, outrageous celebrates women who always dare to break the mold and go after their desires. Bridgerton fans and readers of Grace Burroughs, Sophie Jordan, and Alexa Aston won't want to miss this clever and exciting new love story from the acclaimed author of Notorious. And that was the first book in the series. Um, and you guys know that I just love uh, Minerva's books. It was funny because I did a uh, Goodreads review of her first book and I can't think of what it was called, but I'd said that she, um, that it, she wrote like Georgia hair, but with sex and they actually grabbed that and put it on the cover of the book. I was really amused by that. Um, so about this novel from handsome hostage to unexpected suitor when Ava de Courtney, sorry if I'm saying de Courtney de Courtney, kidnaps Godric Fleming. Her only plan is to stop the irritating Earl from persecuting her beloved brother. But once she has the intriguing rogue in the confines of her carriage, she longs to taste the passion she senses simmering beneath his rugged exterior. Her forbidden plan is foiled, however, when Godric turns the tables, taking her hostage instead and demanding they marry at once. Go you Godric. 
the last thing Godric wants to do is make the fiery, impulsive Ava his wife, despite her delectable mouth and alluring innocence. He knows from experience that nothing is forever, not even love. But honor demands he do right by the lady, no matter how stubbornly Ava tries to hold on to her independence. And while the road to the Scottish border is beset with danger, Godric's greatest challenge is to keep his hands and his heart from his captivating bride-to-be. So, sounds fantastic. Um, you know, I just feel like you can't go wrong with uh, one of Minerva Spencer's books. So I'll show it to you one more time. Outrageous by Minerva Spencer. Uh, definitely check that out. And then, oh, next Monday, we'll have her here on the podcast. I'm just going to make her do video. I'm going to tell her it's video or nothing. Cause what are we going to do? Have me on video and have her like a blank screen. I guess we could put her headshot on there or something. That'd be weird. I don't know. I'm just going to tell her she has to do, she has to do video. That's she wants to be on my podcast. That is the price you pay. Uh, all right. Earrings. We're getting to the end of the earrings. Um, these are posts. These are the ones that are similar to the uh, peach colored ones that I had uh, the other day. These are um, squares, square posts, silver setting, a little silver squiggle coming through it with um, a lavender kind of cowrie shell thing. Another one from another set from my mother. Uh, also that I don't wear, <laughs> um, you know, they're, they're pretty They're but they're pastel. I should probably consign some of these would probably be a good idea. So anyway, um, yeah, I'm in happy place right now. It's, it's nice to begin a new book. For some reason, the heirs of magic series is, um, very easy for me to write. And it was very easy for me to jump back into Jen's head. I think partly because I've been writing her all along. I don't know. Uh, but it, yeah, it was really fun. It was fun to write it yesterday. And so, um, fingers crossed that this is a smooth, write. And, um, oh, I'm not sure what bird that is. It's a different call. Uh, if you recognize it, comment and let me know. All right. I am going to go on my merry way. I will remind you all that first cup of coffee is part of the frolic media podcast network, and you will find more podcasts that you love at frolic.media slash podcasts. And we'll talk to you all on Thursday. You all take care. Bye-bye.